Welcome back to another discrete math tutorial. I thought in this tutorial we'd go over logical equivalence laws. So logical equivalence laws, what does that deal with? Well, we can prove that something is a tautology or a contradiction with a truth table, for example, or that two statements are equal to each other, or that two statements are equivalent to each other. However, if, uh, if you have, for example, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V inside your statement, then that is 2 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 2 to the 7 power, which is 128 rows that you would have to write out and try to prove those true, true, false, false, and the stuff that we've been doing. Luckily, there are certain laws that you can apply to these statements and see if you can simplify it to whatever you need it to to be well, let's start off with a few laws first law is called the identity law and the identity law states that p and true is always equivalent to p now why is this the case let's look at another example p or false is also equivalent to p how so think about it this way if you substitute through here, then whatever the value of P is, that is going to dictate what the outcome is. Let's, let's do an example. Let's say true and true, so this is P, is equivalent to what? Well, it's equivalent to true. Also can be seen as P, where you're saying, why isn't it true? For example, why is P and T not identical or not equivalent to, to true? Well, as you can see, if we set this time p to false, this and true is what? It's equivalent to false, again, which is the value of this p. So no matter what the value of p is, that is going to dictate the outcome. And that is why p and true is equivalent to p. More concept for p or false. Well, p or false is equivalent to p as well. Why? Because this p dictates what this outcome is going to be. So let's say P is true, true or false is true. Let's say P is false, false or false is false. Another example pretty soon in the next law, we'll see how we can have a different result here if we manipulate these symbols a little bit. Go ahead and look at the domination laws. So in domination laws, you have P or true, so now we swap the symbol to P or true, and guess what? That's equivalent to what? True. Because regardless of what P is, if P is true, true or true is gonna make true. If P is false, false or true is gonna make true. Regardless of what the input of P is here, true or anything else is always true. More concept applies to P and false. Well, that one is actually even easier to see because in the conjunction, the only time you can have a true conjunction is if both values are true. So if one value is false, well, guess what? It's going to be equivalent to false. True and false make false, and false and false make false. So this is a domination law. I hope you can see how this identity law is different from this domination law. Let's look at the next law called the impotent law. And what does the impotent law state? The impotent law states that P or P is equivalent to P. Because, well, I mean, this is pretty easy. True or true is equal to true. If P is false, false or false, P is equal to false. That's why P is equal to this. P cannot be equal to true. It cannot be equivalent to true. Because let's say the P's are false, false or false, well guess what? That's false, not true. So it has to be equivalent to P. Similar, P and P is equivalent to also P. Looking at the next law, we'll go ahead and look at the double negation law. So what does the double negation law state? So if you have a negation of a negation of P, that is equivalent to P. This is actually pretty straightforward and you should recognize this that a negative negative one is equal to just one why 
this technically gets distributed in here. Well, negative times a negative is a positive. And that's the way I always look at these double negation. A negation of a negation is the positive, technically. Let's say P was false, well then the negation of the negation of false is false. Next law we're gonna focus on is the commutative law. And that states that P or Q is equivalent to Q or P. Pretty straightforward. If you said either he's five or he's six, it's the same thing as saying either he's six or he's five. It's just technically preference. Same goes for P and Q. Well, that's equivalent to Q and P. So you can just swap these around. Building on from these commutative laws, we have the associative laws. What does the associative law state? Associate law states that P or Q or R is equivalent to P or Q or R. So you don't you do not have to technically evaluate P or Q in the parentheses first. Shift the parentheses order is what I'm trying to get to. Now let's take a look at an example. Let's say true or true or true. Well that's true. True or true or true, well that's also true. Look at true or false or false. True or false is true. True or false is also true. Now let's look at it if we shift in the other. True or false or false, that comes out to true or false, which again is false. And we can do a few more examples, but I think you get the picture right here. Also, it states that P and Q and R is equivalent to P and Q and R. So same concept, we can do another one of these examples and I'll let you go ahead and do that yourself to prove it to yourself that this is in fact a legitimate equivalence. And I think I'm gonna end this tutorial right here. I want this stuff to sink in. Don't wanna overwhelm you guys, so make sure to look out for the next tutorial where we continue our discussion of the logical equivalence laws. Hope you guys subscribe for your daily discrete math tutorials.